Hello, I'm Wayne Gretzky. I played hockey in the NHL for a lot of years. I started out learning and playing hockey at a young age. Like all you attending the Bell Tire Hockey Skills Competition at Great Lakes Sports City here in Fraser. First of all, I'd like to congratulate you. This is a tough competition. So whatever the outcome of the competition, really, each and every one of you is a winner. Because this is all about learning. And learning is one of the most important things in life. No matter what you do, it is so important to practice your skills and then to ultimately apply your skills. One of the greatest skills is the skill of control because, especially on the ice, control is so important. Controlling your skating, stick handling, passing and shooting. Control makes you a better player and it makes the exciting sport of hockey safer for everyone. There's also another aspect of control that I want to mention. Your behavior on the ice, and that's called sportsmanship. I'm sure you've seen a lot of players on TV lose control and slash their opponents or get involved in fights. But let me tell you that that's not the essence of hockey. The essence is sportsmanship and control on the ice and off the ice. It's teamwork, it's effort, it's pride, and it's persistence. It's control, and that's the essence of good sportsmanship. Finally, I'd like to thank all of you who participated in the Bell Tire Hockey Skills 2000 competition and the folks at Bell Tire and Goodyear, the Michigan Amateur Hockey Association and the people at Great Lakes Sports City for making this competition possible. So good luck and have fun. Coming up is a video I prepared entitled Train to Win. It will help you answer questions on how to improve your power, strength, speed, flexibility, recovery time and overall performance. So enjoy the video and remember what you learned at the skills competition and we'll see you at Center Ice. Hi, I'm Wayne Gretzky, and welcome to Train to Win. You know, fitness has become a huge part of being a professional hockey player. And I always get parents coming up to me, coaches and young players saying, at what age should I start training? In this show, we're going to show you how you can train to become a better hockey player by not only having fun, but working very hard. Inside is a really good friend of mine who happens to be one of the great authorities on off-ice conditioning. So let's go meet him. Hey, how are you, how are you doing? Hey, Gratz, great to see yeah, you. Yeah, good to see you. How's everything going, all right? Oh, just great. I bet 20 years ago we started together in Edmonton, you never would have thought an inline skate would be important to a hockey player's career. Boy, the game's really changed, really. <laughs> this is my good friend, Dr. Howie Wanger, who I've had the great pleasure of working with on some National Hockey League teams. He's been a fitness advisor for Team Canada, and together we've been in some Canada Cups and had a lot of great times. But Howie, you know, we both love hockey so much. Explain to me why and how uh, fitness has become so important to our game. Well, the, as we said before, the game's really changed. The players are bigger, they're faster, they're stronger. If you want to be able to compete, you've got to be really right. fit. And not only that, you need the flexibility and the agility to be able to puck handle. You need strength to be able to hold an outside edge, to do an outside drive, to be able to move people off the puck. You need the aerobic fitness to be able to recover at the end of a shift between periods, between games, and in the tournaments that young kids are playing these days. And on top of that, you need the explosive power and the speed 
to be able to accelerate and capture ice like you do so well. So to me, if you haven't got fitness, you can't be the best that you can be. Right, absolutely. So what we're going to do is try to show people how you can make training efficient, effective, and yet most of all fun, right? Yes, for sure. Okay, let's go meet some young friends. Great. <laughs> hey, Karen. I see you're still letting them in, eh? How you doing? Doing okay. Yeah. Where you been? Well, I've been working out this summer. Doing good. Oh, yeah. Hey, yeah, all right. Hey, listen, uh, you and your guys uh, want to work out? I don't know. You guys, you guys ready to work out? Yeah, yeah let's go. All right, let's go. Let's do it. First thing we're going to do, the first exercise we're going to do is going to be exactly what we would do for a hockey practice or a hockey game, and that's to stretch. So, uh, Howie, we're going to have you uh, orchestrate this stretch, and we're going to have my good friend Garrett here lead us. So we're all going to get to work here and give you guys a little demonstration. You all set? Let's all get right. at it. Okay. The way we're going to start out our stretch is we're going to have everybody kind of sit uh, in the sitting position with the soles of their feet together. Uh, you'll notice the knees are bent. You'll notice Garrett, who's extremely flexible, is able to bring those heels very, very close uh, back into, into his body. Others who are a little less flexible may not have that same ease of being able to do it. You'll notice Garrett puts his elbows inside of his groins here, and you can actually give a little pressure with your elbows and help stretch those groins out a little bit more. Now let's just lay back onto our backs now. Hold that same position. And now what we might do is put our hands now on the insides of our thighs and just give a little pressure, just a little extra pressure to feel it pull. You'll notice that we're holding these stretches for approximately 10 seconds and then releasing. Now extend your legs right out flat on the floor. Bring up your left knee and grip it with your hands just below the knee and pull it into your chest. Try and bring your chin up towards your knee. Excellent. Again, giving a little stretch to the lower back. Now drop your left hand away from your knee and with your right hand, pull that leg right over to the side. Turn your head the other way and lay your shoulders flat. Now you'll really notice a really nice pull in through the hip area and the lower back. That really helps release it. Hold it there for 10 seconds and then relax. Now what we'll do is straighten that same leg and bring it straight up, grab it below the knee or around the calf. You'll notice Garrett, who's extremely flexible, is able to grab up here closer to the ankle uh, Gretz is very close to the ankle, and we want to keep that leg straight. In fact, if you bend it a little bit at the start, bend it and pull it a little bit forward, then as you get it out there, now straighten it very slowly, and you'll feel it pull all back up in the hamstrings. Bring both your knees up into your chest, and now just rock very slowly, on the, just on the lower back, and come into a sitting position. We're going to do legs straight, try and keep our knees flat on the ground, try and keep our toes straight up. And Garrett's going to demonstrate the stretch coming forward into the middle and then out each side. Now let me point out again some of the differences that we have in range of motion around that hip joint. Here's Garrett who's extremely flexible with a wide range of motion at that hip joint. You can see most of the rest of us are quite narrow. It doesn't matter. We're going to help release those muscles that help bind us and hold us uh, there at the hip joint. So Gare's going to lead us. First we'll go straight forward, then we'll go out to the left, then we'll go out to the right. Ten seconds each. Now we're going to get up on our knees. And then go on to, go on to just one knee with uh, one leg out to the side like so, 
and keep your upper, upper torso straight. And with that hand that's on the extended hip that Garrett's got here, he's going to put a little pressure there just to put a little more stretch on that particular groin. Let's do some work around our shoulders. One of the ones that we use an awful lot is the one where we bring our shoulder across the body. You can tuck that arm in right under your chin if you want and pull it right across. Notice here the stretch he's putting on the back side of the shoulder and the upper back. Try and keep your head straight ahead, guys. Hold that head straight. Don't let it turn. Or what your hat, what's doing is you're not getting the same amount of stretch. And then the other side, the same thing. Now we're going to stretch out the upper part of the body. Uh, Garrett's going to bring his hand down between, the, between his shoulder blades here on his back and just put a little bit of pressure on the elbow. Try and pull that hand down as far as you can between your shoulder blades and feel that stretching coming right through your triceps. You feel that there? Yeah. Now we'll stretch out the calves and what we'll do with our, for our calf stretch is we'll, we'll take a position like so with our, our front foot down and our front knee bent, back heel on the ground, hands placed on the knee. Try and hold your head up. Try and push your hips forward if you can. Try and get your hips as, as far forward and your back straight. And you should really feel that pull back here on the calf. You know, this stretching period for hockey is extremely important. We use it a lot as a time to get focused on practice, to get focused on the game, start to think about what it is that we're going to do that day. We use it a lot to help our muscles relax so that when we get out onto the ice we can explode, we can do the kinds of skillful quick movements that we have to do. And then following game or practice, stretching is just superb for helping those muscles relax and let us recover. It lets blood go back in there, it brings fuels back in, it gets rid of all the waste products that make us tired. So stretching to me and to the rest of our players is a fundamental part of being able to perform at the highest level that we possibly can. All right, Howie, here we are riding the bikes, and, uh, you know, Paul Coffey is probably one of the first guys that I ever saw that was very religious in riding a stationary bike, but over the years, I really believe, as you know, that riding a stationary bike or Stairmaster or a treadmill is so important for uh, a hockey player. And I think that, you know, one, you're physically ready, two, you're mentally ready, and three, it prevents injuries. You know, when you do this kind of work and you build up the heart and the lungs and the aerobic system, your recovery is just so much better when you're practicing, when you're playing, when you're trying to play back-to-back -back games and doing all the other activities that young kids want to get involved in. Right. Unbelievable kind of, of program for building up our overall fitness. Yeah, and I think it's really important for kids. Uh, you know, you really, I think uh, take it to an extra level. If you're in better shape than anybody else, it really goes a long way. You already know you got that advantage and mentally you can take it to them. All right, All right I'll see you on top of the hill. <laughs> One of the most common uses of the stationary cycle in hockey is using it to help build our recovery system. That system that helps us recover between sprints, between workouts, at the end of periods and between games. That system is our aerobic system, and aerobics are really the key to recovery. We have two different ways to build that aerobic system. One with continuous work at a high enough rate that we could last 45 to 50 minutes, 
Secondly, interval work that really pushes that system up to its highest level by doing work that can last one to two minutes, then recover for one to two minutes, and then go again for one to two minutes. In that case, we try and get seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13 work intervals over that period of time to really push our heart and lungs. We're gonna get my two friends here, uh, Tim here on my right and Drew here on my left, to demonstrate those two particular patterns. Uh, Tim, you know the routine. We've been doing this together for a long time, right? Yeah. What we're going to start here, Tim, is we're going to do a staircase. We're going to start moving you up minute by minute into higher loads and then recover, come back, do that work again. It's a load that you can handle for about a minute. And we'll put together a package of 15 work intervals and 15 recovery intervals lasting approximately 30 minutes. Here we go, Tim. Let's start it out. Pick it up. Good, Tim. That's just right on the money. Working hard here. Excellent. This one isn't your best challenge yet, Tim, but we're going to keep it there. We've been going about 50 seconds now. We're getting ready to pick it up to the next step, Tim. Let's take it up to the next level. Great. We're one level away from that level that we could last uh, for two or three minutes at, so We'll keep this going. That's the way, Tim, and we're gonna pick up now as the next minute approaches. Now we'll take it up the last step. Now at the end of this minute, we're gonna back off for a minute, recover, and then go back up and do that level again for a minute. And we'll package this up, as I say, in a total package of 30 minutes. That's about 15 work intervals at this particular load. The nice thing about this, Tim, you know, you can be watching TV, you can have the earphones on, you can be relating to yourself during this kind of workload. It's really exciting. And now let's back off, Tim, and recover, and then we're going to go back right up to that load after one minute of recovery. And as the minute comes to a close now, Tim, we're going to pick it right back up to where we were last time and go for another minute. Here we go. Excellent, Tim. How do you feel? Nice challenge. Yeah, it's a great challenge. Now what we're going to see with Drew is the other option for training the aerobic system. And that option is a continuous kind of loading that takes us at a load that we can just handle, where we can just comfortably talk for a period of 45 to 60 minutes. This kind of training is really good on days after we've done hard and heavy loads. Um, it's also, if you drop it down a little bit a notch, can even be used on a, on a light or an easier day. Many of our players use this uh, two or three times a week during the summertime and match it with two or three times a week when they're doing the aerobic intervals. Ready to go, Drew? Yep. Just crank this up now, Drew, to that level that we talked about where you can just continue for a period of 45 to 60 minutes. There we go. Now you and I can sit here and talk for a long time. We can read a book mm -hmm. until the sweat starts to drop down on the pages. <laughs> Another great advantage to this kind of training, of course, if you're trying to maintain your body weight, is it's a great calorie burner. And in doing this kind of training, we keep those uh, calories high and we're able to make sure that our fat buildup in our body uh, doesn't impede our ability to explode and to be able to recover during the game. It's a nice match with uh, being able to keep us at the ideal body weight. Well, as we approach 45 minutes here, Drew, we'll, uh, about time for us to take a break. Great effort. We'll do this again. Two or three times this week. And then we may even end up doing some of these intervals as well. Excellent job, boys. Our recovery capability is really going to be better. Here now are some other fun ways to build up your aerobic fitness for much better recovery.
Boy, grass looks like that summer program sure made you a lot stronger. Well, I've followed it pretty closely this summer, but obviously I'm never going to be as strong as Adam Graves or Rick Tockett. But, you know, how so much is being said about uh, strength training. What are the keys to it? Well, the key, Wayne, is really about how you load not necessarily about the kind of equipment you use right. or whether you use your own body weight or whether you even use partner resistance. Really? So like at what age should someone start lifting weights? Well, that's a great question that's asked by a lot of parents and a lot of coaches. You can get stronger when you're 13, 14, and 15 by simply using your own body weight with exercises, using a partner for resistance, and then by the time you become 16, 17, and 18, we can put on bigger loads with weights and machines to make you bigger, stronger, and a more effective player. Great. So we're going to show you some keys to strength training. Here we are, Howie, at the uh, body strengthening. And for a long time uh, in the National Hockey League, weightlifting has been part of our program. And I get parents and young hockey players that come up to me and say, Wayne Gretzky, what is the best way to weightlift? So I'm asking you, what is the best way to weightlift? Well, uh, Gretz, the National Hockey League players haven't been that wrong. Right. When you put load onto muscle, it's going to get stronger. Right. And I think what we do know now is you can make it stronger in different ways by the way you package the load. As an example, if you take high loads and do lower reps, you can make a muscle stronger without getting bigger. If you take a muscle and give it moderate loads for moderate numbers of reps, you can make it stronger and bigger. And thirdly, if you give a muscle very low loads with lots of reps, you give it that kind of muscular endurance. So depending how we load muscle, Gretz, we can get stronger in some different ways. Right. Remember, what we need is stronger hockey players, not better weightlifters. <laughs> right, exactly. Great. Good form. Keeping that lower back flat, Gretz. Good job. Six, let's do it. Four. All right. How are you feeling about that, Gretz? Oh, good. I'm feeling good. You know, I feel a lot stronger and I feel good about it. That's great. That's what happens when we train. All right. Now, why, why has he got his hands more in the middle here? Well, it's interesting. When you do the normal grip with the bench, what we're getting is chest and shoulders. Right. Now, as he varies and comes in a little bit more, we're going to get a little bit more out of the shoulders. Oh, I see. Okay. And then, what we're going to see after, after Gare gives us the narrow grip is... We're going to see him go wide right. and give us another variation. So when you do bench, you can do wide, normal, normal, and then middle. And then narrow. And what we start to do now is get different variations around all those muscle groups so that all our chest and shoulders are being challenged rather than just one small group in one small action. Rex, you can see here now another variation on the bench press. Right. Before we saw wide grip, narrow, and then normal grip. Right. And that challenged different muscles of the chest and shoulder. Now what we've done is come from flat to incline. And All now right. we're going to see differences in the actual stabilizers. So by him changing body position, we make our whole upper body a little bit stronger. All right. Great. Okay, Gretz, you want to take a try at this? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's go. All right. Good job, Garrett. That's the way to breathe. All right. Excellent. You guys, this is a uh, shoulder exercise that I've found has built up my shoulders and obviously prevented injuries. So here we go. That's great. Those elevations at the shoulders, Gretz, are really important. And you know, it's interesting the way you bring your weights together, too. Uh, by bringing them in there, you get some rotation and further strengthening around that particular joint. Excellent. Excellent posture, too. Your back straight. All right. Well, you know, Gretz, the shoulders are really important to hockey players. It's right. one of the most important joints that we have for both protection and for being able to perform well. That's a great exercise. And here's another sequence that has been really effective in building strength for players. Okay. You want to show me that? Yeah, let's start this one out by taking the weights down to your side, putting your palms uh, down. Yep. Uh, and now let's just take the weights and bring them right back up to the shoulder, and then they slowly lower them back down okay. again. Okay, I can handle that. 
Excellent. Good technique, good breathing. All the way up, Gretz, and then slowly lower. Excellent job. Very good. Now you can just stop there, Gretz. What we're going to do is turn your palms backwards. And now exactly the same. Stay in that same plane and move your arms out and elevate right up to the shoulder. Excellent. Can you feel that, Gretz? Working yep. down through the shoulders? Great yeah, job. Yeah. Excellent. Now let's just stop there at the bottom, Gretz, okay. and now put palms up. Okay. So we'll do it that way, and still stay in the same plane, right. and we're going to bring them right up to the top. Right, back down again. You know, if you package these kinds of exercises with about 10 reps where you can't do any much more than 10 or 11, right. and then do those in three sets with about two minutes or three minutes in between, do that two or three times a week, your shoulders will be as strong as they possibly need to be to play this game effectively. And will help prevent injuries. And re that which is really critical in right. this sport. Okay, Gretz. Garrett's got another set of weights for you so that we can challenge your upper arm. All right, great. All right, what are we going to do? Bicep curls are really popular in terms of getting the upper arm uh, challenged. We're going to do them two different ways. Uh, so we're going to start with our palms forward, right. and we're going we're to start by doing them both together in synchrony. Okay. So, Gretz, let's bring it up. Great. Nice, yeah, good straight back. Nice breathing, too. It's really important to be breathing out when you're exerting, so... So good for him. It keeps a nice straight line. Nice. Okay, Gretz, that's enough for the moment. Okay. Now, what we're going to get you to do is do them in an alternate fashion. So when one's coming up and the other one's coming down, we'll be, ex we'll be exchanging them like okay. so. Okay. How's that? Yeah, it's really nice. And you know, when you do them separately like this, you begin to put extra load on other stabilizers. So you have to balance one side of the body while the other side is working, rather than stabilizing the whole body while they're both working together. Again, another way to bring in other muscles and make the upper body stronger. Excellent. Stop there. Good set. Now, Gretz, we're going to try and move around a little bit on that upper part of the arm by simply turning our palms now uh, down oh, rather okay. than having them up. And this one's a little bit more challenging because those muscle groups are a little smaller and therefore a little bit weaker. Okay, one so, at a time? Or? Uh, we, we, I, I think we'll start out by doing them both together okay. and then we'll alternate to one at a time. Okay. Good, good straight line. Nice. Yes. You're keeping those elbows in, which is important. Great. Now let's uh, just stop and go into the alternating mode. Okay. Great, same effect here. What we've done is from stabilizing the whole body to now having to alternate where those stabilizers come and become stronger and, and challenge our core even a little more, that abdominal area that'll make us stronger and more effective in the lower body as well. All right. We're going to now have a great example of how we can use the dumbbells to go after the chest and the shoulders. Okay. Uh, Garrett's going to do some what we call flies. Right. and using dumbbells to challenge that particular musculature. Go ahead, Gare. All right. Excellent breathing. Notice he stays in that same plane, a nice, even, smooth plane, challenging shoulders and chest and making those areas much stronger. Right. That's, that's fine, Garrett. Uh. Now, we're going to look at a really interesting variation on this because what has happened, we've moved singularly through a simple plane. Now we're going to get Garrett to do some twisting. And what that's going to do is cause rotations at the shoulders, challenge those a little bit more, and in a little different way. So Garrett, let's see the twisting kind of fly. Oh, yes. And you can see here, once more, just a slight variation, and now bringing in other muscle groups to help us become a more complete player. All right, Garrett, good job. You can score 50 next year. Thank you. <laughs>
certainly one way to get stronger is to put extra loads onto the muscle. We've seen you can do that with weights. Now what we need to look at is how can we get stronger in some other ways, still putting some load on. You know, some people believe that you can use weights virtually at any time. Our belief is that when you're below 16 years of age, there are some ways to get stronger without using weights and without putting yourself at risk. We're going to look at some of those now, using your own body weight and using a partner to give you some resistance. And even older teenagers and older players can get some real improved strength from being able to do this. Here's the common push-up. You'll notice Gretz's fingers are pointing straight ahead. Let's try it a variation and move the fingers pointing inwards and then we can get the muscles of the back side of the arm and the shoulder to a greater extent. Nice form guys, keeping the back straight, using the arms and the shoulders and even getting some work done on our chest. Excellent. Another way for us to put load on muscle for hockey players, especially the young, is to use partner resistance. Let's watch Gretz and our friend Rob here do a few of them. The forearm, of course, is very important for hockey. And in this case, Rob's going to rotate the stick with a rotation of his wrist and forearm, and Gretz is going to resist him. And then he's going to rotate it. Gretz will rotate it coming back in, and Robbie resists him. Really good. That's it, guys. Just enough resistance so that you feel that load, and you can feel it moving back through. Change to the other, si other side and do the opposite hands. Now what we'll do is move to the bicep. Remember, we've already looked at that with free weights and using the dumbbell. Now in this particular case, Rob will do the bicep curl. Bring it up through that range, Gretz resists him. Gretz pushes down, Rob resists him. And in this way, we get to do that. Notice Robbie's keeping his back nice and straight, his elbows in, and that way he gets to focus on doing the bicep muscle. Excellent. Now here's one where we're holding the stick. Very important muscles in our shoulders here are what we call the rotator cuffs. And this particular action of rotation outward really strengthens them. Here Robbie's going to use that now, rotating out, keeping his elbow in, and Gretz resists. Then Gretz pushes in, and Robbie resists. And we can do it here on the left-hand side or the right-hand side and, and alternate. Now what we're going to do is get uh, Robbie to lay down on the, on the floor. And we've already seen various ways to get after the chest muscles and the shoulders with bench and, and uh, the dumbbells. Rob's going to now go through a little bit of a bench. Notice his hand position is much like the bench. He pushes up and Gretz gives him a little bit of resistance. He moves through that range and gets himself a little stronger. Gretz then pushes him down and Robbie uses his same muscles to do that. Not too much resistance here. What we're doing is trying to get him to move through with some resistance so that the muscles get stronger. Here's another one that we can go after. This is called the lat pull down for these muscles here uh, in the upper part of the back. Again, Robbie is going to pull it down and then Gretz is going to uh, resist. Great. Gretz pulls it up and Robbie resists. Good job, Rob. I noticed that you're pushing right through Gretz's resistance. Excellent effort. Once again, the highlight here is that we can use our muscle groups, a little bit of resistance to make the muscles stronger, but not loading with that extra amount of weight. This way, young guys, medium-aged guys, and even older guys can get a lot stronger. Uh, you know, this is one of the most important exercises for the hockey player's legs. It emphasizes extension at the hip, the knee, and the ankle. and makes us strong in all three of those, which is very similar to what we have in the hockey stride. Right. And you notice that he keeps his back straight, he's careful about the way he extends, he lowers slowly, and then raises slowly. And he doesn't go too far down, He right? sure doesn't, no. He, in fact, you'll notice the knees don't even get to 90 degrees. He stays above that, so the tension is left off the knee joint, put a lot of strength and a lot of force into the hip right. and uh, into the upper leg. Great. Away. Now I'm going to get you to demonstrate how the squat is so much like the hockey stride okay. by extending at the hip, the knee, and the ankle. Perfect. And now what's going to happen when you do that squat and put the extra load on, you're going to have a much stronger and much more powerful stride.
Boy, Gretz, you've sure won an incredible number of awards in your time. Well, thanks, Howie. I've been lucky. I've played some great teams and with some great players. You know, when I think about awards, I think about abdominals. <laughs> you do? Howie, how when you think about awards do you come up with abdominals? Explain that to me. Well, when you win awards, you've got to pull all parts of your game together. That's what the abdominals do with fitness. Right. You know, abdominals bring together the upper body and the lower body for explosive work and for endurance. Without the abdominals, you can't be a complete player. Well, if you really feel that way, let's go do some ab work. I'm with you. All right. Uh, abdominal work is a very serious part about being a professional hockey player. And unfortunately for myself, I had a uh, career-threatening injury because I wasn't smart enough to work on my stomach and do some ab work. So let's do a little bit of ab work, you and I, and we'll go through a few routines, OK? Oh, hey, that's great. All right. In this particular series of abdominal loadings, what we're doing is keeping our lower body stable, keeping his heels on the ground, and making his abdominals lift his upper body. In this case, you don't want to hook your toes under something and pull yourself up, because then most of us as players only use our upper legs to pull up the body. This way, keeping the heels on the ground, you notice Gretz's abs are doing all the work to pull him forward. Now what Gretz is going to show us is some variations now where he'll do a little bit of rotation as he's coming up to challenge those oblique muscles that run off on the side. So he'll come up and go to one side, then come up and go to the other. Great job, Gretz. And in this way, we make those abdominals a lot stronger and a lot more able to deal with power. When we test the New York Rangers at training camp, our expectation is every player should be able to do 120 of these timed at 25 a minute. So they spend about five minutes doing sit-ups continuously, and we stop them at 120. We're now going to look at another way to challenge our abdominals and make them stronger and more explosive. Garrett and Tim are going to demonstrate using the sit-up, which we've seen really puts a strain on the abdominals and makes them stronger. Add in the medicine ball, which is going to make them more explosive. Let's show them, guys. Medicine ball stretches, explodes, using the abdominals to move up our upper body, explode with the medicine ball, push them back. As you can see here, those abdominals are really being challenged. Thanks a lot, guys. We've already seen that the abdominals are really important in twisting motions, and we know that happens a lot in hockey. We're going to get Colt and Drew here to demonstrate use of the medicine ball in a twisting action to help make those abdominals stronger and more explosive. Let's go ahead, guys. Great. Look at the twisting. Look at the medicine ball putting a little extra force on them, being more explosive. Move it up with a little more quickness now. That's right, good control. Now let's sw sw stop him here in a minute. Let's switch to the other side. Torque the other way. Great, to the left now, perfect. Great job. Now what we can try is one time to the right and one time to the left. Let's mix it, okay? Once, that way. Action. One of the ways that we get after the abdominals is to try and keep our upper body stable and move our lower body so that those abdominals have to do that work. What you see Garrett doing now is supporting himself here on the dip bar and now using his abdominals to actually lift his legs up into that horizontal plane. Does that a couple times for us and this time he's going to bring them up, move them to the side and use these oblique muscles across his abdominal area. So you can see these abdominals are challenged in these ways by keeping the upper body stable and having the, the abdominals move our lower body, much like what we have to do in hockey, where our upper body is stable and we're always going around moving our lower body as we skate. Another way to really make us a stronger player. Once you've mastered challenging the abdominals on the dip bar, you can move on to a more advanced level, as we're going to see here with Garrett, where he hangs from the chin bar, again, keeps his upper body stable and uses the abdominals to elevate his legs up into the middle and then using the obliques to move to either side, challenging side on the right, back into the middle, up and off to the left. Excellent job, Garrett. All right. That way those, those abdominals can get so much stronger, make you more powerful and explosive to meet every situation that you can run into on the hockey ice.
Hey, Howie, what's going on? I'm just doing a crossword, Gretz. All right. Hey, you know an 11 letter word for a power and speed technique? John LeClaire. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you just can't take your mind off of hockey even uh -huh. for a minute, eh? <laughs> I think the word they're looking for is plyometrics. Uh oh, leave it to crossword puzzles or a professor to come up with these big words, but what is plyometrics? Well, plyometrics is one technique we have to make players faster. Right. You know, if you add to that quickness and agility and sprints, you've got a really fast hockey player. All right, well, let's get to these young guys. I know they want to get quicker and faster, so let's work on some plyometrics. I'm with you. Yeah. To be an explosive hockey player, you have to train explosively. And plyometrics are the kind of exercise that will do that for you. Today, what you're going to see demonstrated by Wayne and the guys are six different plyometrics that are going to make you a more explosive player. The first one, is from an inside edge to an inside edge, just like you do on ice. Great job, guys. And the second one that we're going to do now is a crossover jump from an outside edge to an outside edge. Again, just like you do on ice. Great job, guys. And the third one that we're going to do is two legs, left side to right side. And notice the explosion and the landing stops, just like you do on ice. Excellent. Great job, guys. And the fourth one that we're going to do is from the left foot only, jumping to the left and the right. Great explosions. Excellent effort. Now we'll go on to the other leg. Again, remember, you do this on ice, right leg to right leg. Perfect. Excellent. And the last one that we're going to do here is a, a one that gives us a little bit extra explosion. Isn't necessarily quite as close to hockey, but is really great for that explosive power. It's the squat jump. Let's go, guys. Higher. That's it. Great job. All right, Howie. Now that we got all that, how do you uh, package that into a training program? Well, Gretz, I think what we've got to do is we've seen six great exercises here today. Plyometrics are a little tough on the legs, so we only try and do them twice a week. We try and pick three or four from that package of exercises, right. and then do 10 to 15 jumps of each of those with about two minutes rest in between, and stop and do another set, and then a third set. Okay. And if we can do that two times a week, our explosion is really going to get better. Great. Now, does it uh, matter if you're a teenager or older or younger teenager? Does it matter? Well, that's a great question. You'll notice that the jumps that we did today, we stayed really low, right. just like we're on the ice. And I think kids of any age can do those and become more explosive. Once you get a little bit older, you can start putting a little bit more height into your jumps with a little bit more landing and even jump up and down off of a bench. But when you're young, I think it's just as well to stay nice and low. Even for the old guys, it really makes it a lot better associated with hockey and the on-ice Are you talking skate. about me, Howie? Oh, well, it's good, <laughs> All yeah. right. Well, let's go over the six uh, crucial steps one more time.
One way of improving our top speed is through sprinting. Sprinting can be done in three different ways. You can do it unassisted, you can do it with resistance, and then you can assist the sprinter to even go faster. We're going to give you some examples of those. I'm going to use my friends Colt and Robbie here to do the unassisted sprinting. Let's go guys, let's get lined up. The key thing here is we're not going to go long, we're going to go 10 to 20 yards, but we're going to go at high speed. We're going to think high speed fast as we go through here. You'll go on your own time, focus on that end, sprint through, and then we'll get you to wait down at that end for us. Nice. Knees high, Robbie. That a boy. Pump those arms. Excellent. And return. That's it, Colt. Knees high. Excellent. Nice run. That's it, Robbie. Knees high. Arms going. Drive through. That's a boy. Great sprints. Now, Gretz and Garrett are going to demonstrate resisted sprinting using a couple parachutes that we picked up at some sporting goods stores. You ready, guys? Absolutely. Okay, let's get it going. On your own time, Gretz. Excellent job. On your time, Garrett. Great job. Take your time, Garrett. Get it set. Great job, boys. We're now going to look at the third way of doing sprints, which is assisted kind of sprinting. In this case, Garrett and Wayne are going to demonstrate again using some special tubing that we got at a local sporting goods store. Garrett's going to jog out with his tubing on, put a lot of tension on it until Gretz feels that it pulls him along and he drives with his sprinting action. Garrett slows down, then builds the tension again, and Gretz drives out again with his sprints. Ready to go, boys? All right, absolutely. Let's keep that good sprinting for him, Gretz. Okay. All right. Excellent job, guys. Excellent, fast, quick. What a way to build that big speed. There's more to being an exciting player than just being explosive as we saw with plyometrics. Another great characteristic is having quickness and agility. And what that means to us is being able to move our feet quickly in a confined space under control. Let's see what we can do to make ourselves that little bit extra more exciting. All right, let's try some. All right, Howard. Okay, what we're going to do first here is really move our feet quickly as we shuffle across the floor. Great job. That's a way to move, Gary. That's a way to move. Yeah, we'll do exactly the same coming back. Quick, 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 Yes! All right, that's good. Okay, great. Now, we'll get a little bit more complicated. All right. And what we're going to do this time is what they call the karaoke shuffle. And again, the idea is quick movement, but stay in control and moving in a confined space. We're sliding across, behind, across, in front. Across, behind, across, in front. I'll give you a little bit of quick demonstration of that and then away we go. So it's great. Yes! Way to go, Gare. Quick, 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 quick. That's it. Quick, 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 quick. Quick, 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 quick. Okay, now we're gonna go back, how are we? Coming back. Yes. Great job. All right, that's good, that's good. Now, let's make quick feet again. What we're gonna do, remember, we gotta change direction as well. This time we're gonna be going backwards, 
quick feet backwards, then turn and shuffle off the back. So remember, keep our feet going, quickly going back, and then just like a pivot turn, shift into the shuffles, and away we go. So here we go on the backwards. Quick, 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 quick. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Good. Great. Great. This time, this time turn and face us this way. Good, Gretz. Great. Way to go, Gareth. Excellent, guys. Excellent. Quick, 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 quick. Great job. All right, that's good. That's good. Yeah. Okay, this time, what we're going to do is we're going to combine another two. We're going to go forwards, change direction, and move into the karaoke shuffle. So this time again, it, remember, quickness is where we're going. So it's quick, 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 slide. Excellent. Great job. That's it. Quick, quick, quick. Quick, 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 quick. Great job. And let's come back. Gretz. All right, that's good too. We got this group going well today. Hey, the group is really, really moving. All right. Uh, now uh, we're gonna put, we're gonna blend together the shuffle and the karaoke. So this time we're gonna side shuffle across and uh, facing inside, turn around and karaoke facing outside. Okay. Again, that same kind of quickness. So here we go. Shuffle, 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 shuffle. Great job. Yes, very nice transition, great transition. Stay in control, stay quick. That's the way. Quick, 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 quick. Well, Howie, that was a uh, great workout, but a lot of fun, but a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. Well, you're exactly right, Kretz, but you know if you practice that day in and day out, you get better and better and better. You know, if it was easy, there'd be a lot more Paul Koreas. <laughs> yeah, I guess you're right about that, Mel. Listen, speaking of all that, how often and how much should someone work out doing this stuff? Well, these are the kinds of things that are really skill-oriented, and they're not fatiguing, but they right. really challenge you to do it skillfully. So you really could put one or two or three of these in to your workouts every single day, just so that you get a lot better at being agile, coordinated, balanced, and under control. Right. Uh, just one more thing. My young friend here has a question for you. Oh, yeah, Robbie, go ahead. I'm 12 years old. Should I be doing this type of workout? Oh, yeah, Robbie. You know, we talked about plyometrics, and sometimes those high jumps can be a little bit hard on you guys, and it's something we don't recommend, or heavy weights. But this kind of work really helps your nervous system make you a better hockey player, make you more skilled, and ultimately, down the road, be able to take you where you want to go to be the best you can be. All right, thank you very much, Howie. Now let's refresh ourselves and go over these five key exercises one more time.
Well, Howie, so far we've had a lot of fun working out, exercising, and getting ready for what we want to do to become better players. Now, we're going into areas that are a little bit different. We're going to talk about uh, proper diet, a little bit about foods, and uh, the young guys here obviously probably a little bit different than I do, or professional hockey players do, but all in all it's pretty similar. And uh, you know, I, I've played 21 years or 20 years of professional hockey and I try to stick to the same kind of diet, what I'm used to and what I'm accustomed to. Obviously with these kids playing junior hockey or peewee hockey or bantam hockey, they go to school till 3 o'clock and um, it's a little bit more difficult to uh, get an eating pattern of, of uh, eating at 12.30 or 1 o'clock on game day. So I really find that it's really important the night before to eat properly and of course game day to eat properly. And uh, I'm sure these kids have some questions for you about what is the right foods to eat, when they should eat, how much they should eat, and obviously what kind of soft drinks and, and waters and how much they should be drinking. So, if any, if, does anybody have any questions? Yeah, I've got a question. Okay, hey, Tim. Um, I play um, Major Junior uh, in the Ontario Hockey League, and uh, sometimes we have some long bus rides after our trips. Uh, let's say I have a game Friday night and then another game Saturday night, um, and the game doesn't end until, say, 11.30. Do I uh, eat right after the game, or should I wait until the next day? Tim, that's a great question because, you know, the same problem occurs in the National Hockey League where they're playing back-to-back -back games, they get on planes and they fly to other sites. And I think one of the things that we have to remember is that when you're playing a game, like, you use up a lot of fuels that you've got to have back and ready by the next day when you're ready to play again. And there's a very narrow window in our day after a game when you can refuel. And if you don't hit that window, it takes you a much, much longer period of time. And that, the best window is about 30 minutes after the game. The next best window is two hours. And after that, then it takes much longer to refill those stores. So right in that, right afterwards, on the bus, we should be having the proper kinds of foods. You can pack fruits and vegetables uh, in a little bag to take with you. You can have water afterwards, which is really important for getting your energy levels and your, your body back up to normal. And you can even have a sandwich on there. We have uh, turkey sandwiches with nice bread and lettuce and so forth, vegetarian sandwich. I think the thing we've got to be a little careful about is fats and putting greasy foods into our system, like uh, burgers and fries and those kind of things, because they can be detrimental to what we're trying to do the next day. And uh, one of the things I really believe in that I've found has been effective for me in my career even from the time I was these guys' age, is that I really think it's important the night before that you eat properly. I think that some of the players and some of the young guys don't understand just how important uh, the, the meal the night before is, number one, and number two, how important rest is the night before a game. I've been in pro hockey for 20 years, and I haven't swayed from that pattern whatsoever, and I found it to be very beneficial to my career. Yeah. You know, I think so much emphasis has come down to the pre-game and pre-practice meal. Right. But what is the most important is how you're eating on the day before and the days before. Right. So if you're eating well, sometimes you can even offset having something go wrong with what's happening on game day. And boy, when you talk about rest, I mean, this whole idea of nutrition and rest fit into a real important package exactly. of how you get yourself ready. How can people come and expect to be able to play when they haven't refueled and they're tired. And now it doesn't matter what kind of training right. you've been doing. You've lost a good portion of what you're going to be able to put out. Yeah, you're a step behind and, and it just doesn't work because too many guys are concentrating on being ready and they're already focusing on the next game. And this example here is a, uh, this would be an NHL uh, pre-game meal that we usually like to eat between 12.30 and 1, all the guys together buffet style. Um, we're missing steak, which I'm comfortable eating, but uh, the new wave or the new generation likes to have chicken or fish, which is also good, but I'm comfortable eating a little bit of steak. That's what I've done my whole life, and um, it's worked a little bit, I guess. So I, I haven't swayed too much from that, but if you could maybe take us through uh, what you have here um, that each guy kind of would like to know about. Gretz, uh, you and I have battled for how long now? About <laughs> 20 <steak>. years. <laughs> the time I tried to take the steak off your plate, you almost rang my neck. Uh, but seriously, I, I think, once again, we have to balance what we're eating for nutrition and what players really like to 
feel good about to get right. them prepared. And I think as long as we're not harming you, and the rest of your, your diet is sound and is, is of the proper things, yeah. we have to be a little bit more flexible. I think if you were to ask me preferentially which kind of thing would we rather have there as a meat and a protein source, I think we'd rather have the lean white fishes and the lean skinless chicken and those right. things. They're a preferential one. But if you're looking after yourself in other ways, by getting the fruits in there, by getting vegetables that have been steamed and prepared in that way, you'll even notice we got dips here right. that are pureed vegetable dips. You know, they're not really high in fat or those kind of things. Salads that, that are prepared that we can have that way, the rices and the baked potatoes. In fact, oftentimes you'll notice even in our pregame, we have a variety of potatoes prepared in some different right. ways so that they can have that. And then you can see the pastas, which are the favorite of yeah. hockey players all, all the around the world. On game day, how much water should I drink during that time? Well, Drew, it's uh, water's a uh, just has to be a part of what we do when we're at, when we're athletically involved. You, you know, it's it's interesting that you guys work so hard. You can sweat out over a liter of water, or you know, almost a quart of water every hour. Well, you almost can't absorb it that fast. So you've always got to be re putting fluid back in. You should be having. Uh, one or two glasses of water before a game. You should try and take in one or two glasses of water during the game, and then after the game, one or two or three or four more glasses of water, just to make sure that you don't get dehydrated and you don't lose the ability, you know, the ability to keep playing. You can lose as much as 25% of your work capacity with just sweating out what you sweat out in one hour. 25%. You can train for a year and not improve at 25%. So water is a critical ingredient for keeping those energy levels up. How do we have such a range of age groups here? Some, I know a lot of the kids have questions. Colt at the end down there, he has a question for you. Okay, um, on a game day, after we eat our lunch or whatever, before a game at night, um, what's a good snack to eat if we're still hungry before the game? Uh, I think that's, that's a really common one. I mean, even in the National Hockey League, when they have a nice pregame meal at 12.30, Come 4 o'clock or 5 o'clock, there's that little edge on where you're feeling a little hungry and you need that extra food. I think, what again, what we've got to be careful of is what we take in as a snack doesn't hurt us. So we've got to be careful. I think there's some ideal ones that are sitting around. Uh, buns and bread and toasts and muffins and bagels are great ones. Pretzels are an ideal one. Look out here in front of us here, uh, Cole. We've got vegetables and fruits and and uh, even, some even put on uh, one or two pancakes and put a little bit of jam and that kind of thing with it or slice some fruit onto a pancake and enjoy that. Those are the kind of things that are going to re-energize you and not detract from your ability to go out and perform. Say we have a game at 3 o'clock and uh, we eat lunch at 12. Would it be all right to eat a cheeseburger? Would it hurt? Uh, how old are you, <laughs> Rob? You're 12. Well, Gretz has often asked me the same question, so I, had, you know, I just wanted to put that into perspective. But you know, I think we have to also realize that we've got 12-year-olds and uh, life must go on, and there must be some degree of, of fun there. I, I, I worry a little bit about too strict a rule. I think, if, I think on occasion having a cheeseburger for lunch is not going to be a problem. But in a cheeseburger sometimes we can sit and we can look and we can ask ourselves, is this thing just something I'm doing to help me not be hungry? Or can I have something else that would actually make me play better that afternoon? And if I, think, I think if you change the cheeseburger over to having another kind of sandwich um, with, uh, with lean turkey and maybe some lettuce and those kind of things in it and selecting from that kind of thing, selecting from a baked potato rather than french fries, um, but some of those things aren't going to be that big a deal to a 12-year-old. But on the other hand, the other things might even help you play better. Well, I agree, Howie. Kids got to be kids. <laughs> no matter what age they no are. No matter what age. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not the whole plate, Cole. Like, just a little bit, you know? I think it's over. I want you to hit it. I over on the side. I look there. You're good to go and do the color. Oh, yeah. All right. Excuse me. Just have a little rice here. Oh, on the side. Yeah, Try right. the fish.
Well, Howie, here we are again. And did you ever think again 20 years ago that soccer, which the Europeans were probably uh, very influential about, uh, would be a part of our game today? No, you know, back then like, we probably would never have done it, but as we've said so many times before, the game has changed and it's been an integral part of the highly skilled part of European uh, hockey for a while and it's time that, that we began to develop those kind of skills in our players. Yeah, and I think that uh, in my career, in the 20 years I've played, I wish that I could have had a show like this at uh, 18, 17, 19 years of age teaching me how important off-ice training is and yet uh, how much fun you can have at making yourself a better athlete. Yeah, you know, I, one of the things that you've said to me for years now is that it's not good enough to be simply a highly skilled player. That you've right. got to be a world-class athlete oh, to absolutely. do these kinds of things. And I think that shows in your commitment to putting together a video like this. Yeah, I, I think that uh, the game of hockey, there's so much love for it now. And players want to get so good at it. They want to be so dedicated to it. And they want to play it for a long time that they're taking this part of the game very serious at a very young age. And that's probably why I get mothers and fathers and coaches asking me questions about fitness. But as you said, the players are getting so much bigger and so much stronger today. And, um, and most of all, they have a love for the game. So they're putting more effort and time into making themselves better. Yeah, that's right. I mean, I just think, Gretz, like now when you got to accelerate so fast, I mean, how can you do that if you're not strong enough to hold an edge? Right. I mean, how can you do an outside drive if you can't hold someone off and be able to establish position in front of the right, net. Exactly. You know, come back, like, how many of your goals out of all those thousands of goals that you've <laughs> scored, how many of those came late in the shift yeah. and late in a period and back-to-back -back games? I mean, you almost used your high recovery capability, right. your aerobic fitness, as a real advantage for you yeah. over many other guys who were tiring out at that time. Yeah, and I, I wish that I would have done more body strengthening as a young player. I wish I would have done more ab work. And I think one of the great things about this show is we're giving young kids that opportunity to start focusing right now. But one of the things I'm most proud of is that I combined soccer and baseball and tennis and lacrosse and track and field into my hockey. And I think those hand-eye coordinations, those uh, the lot of running I did in lacrosse and soccer and track and field really helped and made me a better hockey player, made me a better athlete. And as you said, I did score a lot of goals late in games. I did score a lot of uh, key goals in overtime because I felt fresh and I felt mentally strong. And I think all those things, all those uh, off-ice training and conditioning made me a better player. Yeah, and you know, you know, we don't even think very much, uh, too much about what fatigue does to us mentally. Right. Like, you know, as soon as you start getting tired and you make a decision and it's a tenth of a second late, right. that's the wrong decision. Yeah, exactly. Even though a tenth of a second right. earlier, it was the right Especially one. Especially this level. Oh, that's right. And so you, these players that are playing 25, 30 minutes a game, if right. they can't have that kind of recovery capability, their mistakes are going to pile up and pile up and it's going to be costly to them and the team. Yeah, and what we talked about earlier too, injuries you know become a factor if you're tired yeah. physically and mentally that's right. you get injuries you're going to miss two or three games and you know you don't want to miss any games one of the things i'm most proud of is that i've been there to be able to try to play each and every night and guys like paul coffee have done that too guys have been around a long time and i'm very proud of that yeah and you know fitness brings that to us it brings us an ability to outside of the sport right. to live a full and normal life here you are with a family right. a number of kids who are up earlier than the birds and running after you and you've got the energy level right. you've got the fitness to be able to deal with that to share your energy with them with the sport with the public mm -hmm. i mean the demands that are placed on you in that way if players are going to be at that level in the national hockey league it's no more an isolated kind of game right. you've got to interact with the community with your family with the exactly. world with television the media you've got to have this kind of fitness behind you in order yeah. to be able to do it. Well, as I say to people, whether you're going to be as uh, great as John Beliveau or Gordie Howe, uh, if you're a below average player or an average player, I really feel that if you follow this show, and if you watch what you have put into a book and now onto tape, that maybe one day your dream will come true and you will make it to the National Hockey League. And believe me, it's the greatest life in the world. So I really want to thank you for being part of this. I hope everyone gets a chance to see this show. Yeah, I do too, Gretz. You've been an inspiration both to me and to millions of kids out there in our country and throughout the world. Thanks. Thank you very much.
plyometrics is to really watch for the way that he explodes after he's done a jump and landed. So when you come back to try and attempt to do this particular activity, you'll be able to mimic that exactly. Your second, Gretz, you're going to get ready. You jump kicks and stuff? I can't do that. <laughs> 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 I can't do that. <laughs> you know, when I think about those awards, I think about the abdominals. <laughs> you do? Howie, you know, how does fitness have to do with abdominals? How do it work? <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> That too. <laughs> 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 well, that was only my second mistake <laughs> ever in my life. Ever. Well, uh. <laughs> Good. The beach. Great. Let's show you some key fundamentals to strength training. You want to know what Wayne's is? Say a little prayer for you. We I will say a little prayer. All he does is sing that all day long in class. In the morning I wake up, put on my makeup. Say a little prayer for you. You feel like I should go see it.